Granny used to tell me all the time Sparks and feats and preparation combined The road been right here all this time But you gotta look with more than your eyes And the small axe Jesse Ryle representing for I Just Star Mindset Rich forever And eventually became a hand-picked student of the Baba Shanti High Priest King Emmanuel Charles Edwards Chris Dougie is a community educator, counselor, cultural historian, and a master herbalist. He's been living in the United States for over 25 years. He's currently a leading priest and a founding member of the Miami, Florida branch of the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress. Chris Dougie is also the president of the Roots Foundation, Inc., a Florida based nonprofit organization. He's also the author of the book, The Philosophy and Opinions of the High Priest, which is a literary tribute to Bobo Ashanti founder, King Emmanuel Charles Edwards. And he most recently co-authored volume one of the book, Rastafari in the 21st Century, What Life Has Taught I and I, together with uh, Rasai Jabalani Tafari. His new book is subtitled A Tribute to the Rastafari Elders. As a holistic practitioner and naturopathic herbalist, Priest Dougie is a member of the Cannabis Technical Committee. This is a select group of knowledgeable advisors working with the Bureau of Standards of Jamaica and the Cannabis Licensing Authority, the CLA, to create the standards which govern the medical cannabis industry's regulations on the island. Due to his invaluable contributions to the newly drafted standards, he is a recipient of the 2019 Bureau of Standards Jamaica Award. And Priest Dougie joins me in the studio. Priest Dougie, good morning. Bafa <laughs> Greetings, greetings, Sister Kawu. How you doing, brother? Yeah, man, and blessed love to all your listeners. Yeah, we communicate all the while. Yeah, man, definitely. What's up, business? But here you are in the studio. Good Give to thanks good to be in the space. Yeah, man. You know, I'm going to play some music so you fix a chair so I can see you properly in a piece, doggy, because I'm not seeing you come this way. Yes, great, great, great. At 20 minutes to 8 o'clock. And you heard um, in the bio I just read for Priest Doggy that um, he's lived on Bubba Hill for a very long time as a youth. We're going to be talking about that and much more. Um, Priest Dougie, um, you've been, uh, this, at a pretty young age, you went to, to, to live on, on Bubba Hill. How, how, what was the reason for that? Ah, uh, yes, Sister Kabu. Back in the day, you know, um, in those days when we had cinemas, when that was the trend, you know, going to the movies, we used to, I attended Calabar High School, and we used to skip the last part of school on Thursday or Wednesday and go to the cinema to take in the newest karate flick that came out. So usually on Monday, we would get the news. Bruce Lee and Carter Wong. Yes, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, so, I know. So in, normally on Mondays, Tuesdays, so we would get the star and the gleaner, look through to see what's the new flick coming out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that week I was looking through the paper and I saw a headshot of this person in turban. But the article was profound to me because there were words being used I've never heard put together like black redeemer you know Mm -hmm. the word repatriation at that time that was new to me Mm -hmm. you know and black Christ you know that whole black connotation and it was in the newspaper yes so this whole that whole connotation gripped me Mm -hmm. so in reading the article you know, and the article spoke about this person being a shepherd and what he stood for. You know, he's talking about black liberation. He talked about Gavi and, you know, from his Gavi, you spark Iman because mm-hmm. I'm a Gaviite. Mm-hmm. Even as a youth? Even as a youth because mm-hmm. I grew up with the family. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was 
privilege to the knowledge of God All from right, an so early age. I want to talk about that, but finish your sentence and I will come forward. Yeah, man. So, um, in reading this document now, I got curious at the age of 12. Mm -hmm. Now, normally, as the, far, the furthest I would go would be to crossroads to the, the cinema. The, this is the first time now by myself without my parents' chaperone. I'm going to make a tradition now to find this man. So this week, instead of going to the movies, mm -hmm. while my bridge and them gone to the movies, I took off on this journey. Got to Kingston, asked around by the stars them how to get to Bull Bay. They said, go around by parade, look for an X-98 bus that goes to Bull Bay. Mm -hmm. And did that, found it, got on it. Got off in Bull Bay, but I went down. When asking once, they pointed me to the beach. There was a Rastafari village on the beach, a fishing village, um, with Bongo Gyabi and certain elders that I came to know mm -hmm. afterwards. Mm -hmm. But going down there, I realized that was not where I was looking for. So in asking, they, they pointed me to look up on the hill. When I looked up on the hill, now I saw the red, gold, and green village. Yeah. So I made my way up there. Close, I got my heart pounded. And a lot of the, the stories that you heard as a child about the black heart man and sacrificing children and all of that came to your, the forefront. But regardless of that yeah. kind of fear, I yeah. proceeded. Close, I got the more the drum sound, you know, drew me in. And here I am. From my phone, the man, I never no, left man, the man. No, man, you can't just hear I am like that. When you reach, what happened? <laughs> when, when I reached, the story is that when I reached, sis, as I got to the gate, this thing was magnificent. I saw this arch with red, gold, and green, pictures of Garvey, quotes of the Bible, pictures of his majesty, all this thing that was new to me as a youth. You know, knocked on the gate. This elder came and opened the gate and greeted me with all these salutations, you know, never heard them before. Welcomed me in, took me to the gatehouse, showed me the principle, take out everything out of my pocket, clear everything from the world, put it one side, then we turn to the east and we say a little prayer, you know, giving thanks for they coming in, you know, then he continued to reason with me and, you know, tell me a little bit about the culture. Mm -hmm. then he this said, time you were still a high school student. Yes, I was. Right? I, I had, as a matter of fact, I had recently just started high school because I was 12. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so that was like my first going into second year. Right. So um, he sent the word to King Emmanuel that I was there to visit. And the father said, well, okay, go through and thing, and eventually I will get to see him. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, I got the freedom to, per to walk through and, you know, see the courts and to reason with ones and ones until eventually I was summoned to the, to the courts of the father. And in seeing the father, the whole ambience of the place, and the father in his white, he came, he came out with a picture in his hand, that picture that has become famous. It's on the cover of my book mm -hmm. with him. That same picture on the cover of the philosophy and opinion of the yes. high priest with him yes. holding that picture of the black cross being yes. crucified. Mm -hmm. You know, he came out with that and he mm -hmm. greeted me and told me of the concept mm -hmm. of the black Christ and what he stood for and what he's defending. And mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. So we reasoned for. And, and this is what you're talking about, what, 1973? 1973. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and you kept going. I, I school and, and yes and every day. Sabbath I would go for Sabbath from that I would go for Sabbath until 1976 when I graduated what did your parents say my parents um they didn't really know until after I graduated you know because I always used to spend time by my cousins mm -hmm. you know during the weekend and stuff so yeah. you know you would sir we are very devious so we found <laughs> our way out to, out to get away yeah right. so so in 76 you you made a decision yeah, to, to go to to go and to live. live permanently. How how how? Uh, all right, I, I want to talk about Boba Hill and how things, um, w what you've seen in terms of the progress over time historically, but also um, you mentioned that you lived with the family. That's a family of Mualamu Marcus Messiah Garvey. Yes, um, Miss Ruth Prescott, who is the his his niece, niece. Mm -hmm. and I went to school with her son. 
remember now, her mother Virginia only had one child, Ruth. Yes. Ruth only had one child, Charlie. Mm -hmm. So I went to school with Charlie. You know, I've been, I, I, that, that, you know, it, thank you for reminding me of her, and I wish we could find those interviews. Because she, I've, I've done a few. But, um, right, so you lived with, with her. Yes, I grew right. up with her. And, and as a result of that, you were, from a very early age, introduced then to... to yes, the whole philosophy of Garvey. Right. So, so and you identified as, as a Garveyite anyway? From that time. Mm -hmm. Because growing up with her, she would, you know, she, she had a lot of his writings, you know, mm -hmm. his handwriting, things that he wrote and with, and with his pencil. In, and she would let myself and her son mm -hmm. see them, peruse them and, and look and, you know, she would identify certain topics that he's highlighting and we would yes. converse on it so at an early age that black consciousness was awoken by mama ruth yes. and i will always um acknowledge her and love her for that so it wasn't difficult for, well it, it, it was it was a natural progression for you then into rastafari right? from the teachings of, of yes of naturally as you know most garveyites transitioned into rastafari right? mm -hmm. you know back then yeah. You know, so it was a natural progression because, you know, that consciousness that Garvey awakes, yeah. it puts you on that quest to find yourself yes. and find out more about yourself. And, and to look to Africa. Yes, and yeah. Rastafari was that symbol, yes. you know. Yes. So I was led to that pathway. All right, let me take a quick break. I'll be right back. Is uh, Priest Juggy and uh, talking about a mishmash of things here this morning because we're looking at Rastafari in context and especially um, looking at um, his own experiences on Bobo Hill and um, to to kind of situate uh, Bobo Hill in 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 recent history and now context present yes. present context. So 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 in terms of so what you found on Bobo Hill, what was the organization like? What was the kind of what was the structure like? What and and, and um, did this seem surreal to you in any way? Let me tell you, Sister Kabu. When after visiting on the way down to the bus stop, the only thing in my mind was that if there is really anywhere that represents heaven, I just visited it mm. Mm. because I saw. Everyone there were Rastafari, right? from the littlest child to the eldest. But beyond that, the way they greeted me, the way they spoke, the humility, the love, you know, which is not very evident today, you know, in today's world as morality has decayed. So, I mean, it was magnificent to me, you know. That's why I never left the man's side from I found him, because the standard of life, while poverty, you know, is evident amongst I and I, see, we didn't feel poor. I didn't feel poor. You understand? The richness of the culture that he taught enhanced me and filled me. The, the hope that it instilled in me of a future, you know, and of a vision of Africa, you know, of repatriation, going home and building, you know, a, a society based on the morals that he taught was very encouraging and it, it, it strengthened my resolve you know as a pan-africanist you know so it was very profound to i um in terms of the the um the, the teachings then of of um of, of of a leader what what are some of the things that uh, it all right, and I'm thinking of, of Leonard Hoyle because when you talk about uh, Prince Emmanuel, and, and, and I've done mm -hmm. lots of interviews on him, too, and a lot of readings uh, my own self on him, that he reminds me most uh, of all the later um, leaders of Rastafari of Leonard Hoyle. True or false? Yes, because it, if you think about Pinnacle and you think about Bobo Hill, mm -hmm. it was based on the same self sufficiency mm -hmm. and independent philosophy. Mm -hmm. And um, this, they both carry that same kind of shepherd type of persona. You know what I mean? Now, the difference now with King Emmanuel, a lot of ones have branded him and made him seem like a religionist when he was the furthest thing from it. If you go through the Gleaner archives right now and you look at all the articles from back then that were written about him, you will see nothing talking about church. 
so why 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 is it that the um that the bobos and, and i'm going to say bobo now ethiopia black Africa. Inter- Africa, mm-hmm. congress mm-hmm. um uh, it seems so churchical then no okay let me let me walk down the steps of time um like i said back in the day when the father was a younger person and was mobile he was on the streets educating the people he used to hold a lot of street corner meetings in the early days that is how he was known to the people of western kingston and crowds would gather to hear what he had to say he took that from there to the campyard liberty where he developed a spot where people would come his whole thing he was always in the the face of the the, the, the politicians and the government I have several documents, several pictures, not only documents, but I have pictures with him at the Ministry of Health, at the Ministry of Housing, all of those places, agitating for better living standards for the people of Western Kingston. Mm -hmm. And because he didn't just agitate for Rastafari, he agitated for the people. He became a man of the people, well beloved and known. Mm -hmm. Now, he was an activist more than his is like we know spirituality is personal his faith was a personal thing back then he was a he was coming out of the revival era so he had that that vibe about him but his focus was on Garvey and Garvey's work in his in the 60 minute interview 60 minutes interview that they have out there that 60 minute program that they have from us in it they ask him what is his mission. He says his mission is to finish the work that Marcus Garvey started, which is to build what Marcus Garvey said he did not see, the black man government, mm-hmm. you know, the black, the black man um, representatives of big affairs. Yeah. So that was his mission. How did he begin to do this? By farming. First of all, he hosted the 1958 first groundation convention at Bakawal where um, it was a historically known the first universal gathering of Rastafari to discuss Rastafari business. He invited Claudius Henry to be his co-host and if you know the history of Claudius Henry and his mentality back then you would understand that Definitely, King Emmanuel wasn't a religionist because Claudius was a revolutionary. Mm-hmm. See, especially back then, because we know one of his sons got killed in that whole, that whole revolution, and yes, yes. he did some time and all of that. Mm-hmm. So he was invited to co-host that that gathering. So that mission now is his real mission, or his crusade started in 1958 on the first of March with the founding of the Africa National Congress that grew to become the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress. Mm-hmm. And, and well, I want you to look at, uh, just in the interest of time, I want to talk about how things um, have changed and whether or not um, the, uh, the Ethiopia Black International Congress are... When he transitioned once, First. Exactly. Leaving just the ones from Jamaica, living on the hill, and ones that don't really have anywhere to really, anywhere else to really go in that sense. And because they have resided on Bobo Hill for so many years, right. that is, is their home. home. Yeah. You know what I mean? So over the years now, um, we have always had a problem with the talks in the region. The political talks in the region and then when you said the region within bulbe that area of bulbe especially in the area where we reside now um with the father's presence while they were still lurking around he kept them at bay because of his principle his persona his respect his general respect that people had for him and a lot of those people living in bulbe knew him from trench town and from from Bacawal because they migrated from those places to Bulbe as well mm-hmm. so he was not strange to them so he had that respect so the, those talks were held at bay after his passing they have had a field day it has gotten 
steadily worse. And so you're talking from when? Well, the father transition in 1994. And from 94, it has gotten steadily worse. So you're saying that, um, and, 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 and let us put things in context, because right now we are concerned um about the the kind of a um, criminal attack it would appear to us on bobo hill by, by by others and also about what appears to be happening on bobo hill itself and but you're saying that the writing was on the wall from 95 94 as to what uh, a criminal element seeping in uh, disrespecting the space after the transition of king emmanuel right as you know, Warwick area is a hilly area, so it's, it's, right. it's a good location for people to hide out. Right. It's so, also known, right, yes. as, 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 as an area that um, houses those type of elements. Right. So um, it's just natural. The right. camp, like I said, being a principal place back in the day, solid principle, intact. With, with, and not only that, a lot of I and I that was around King Emmanuel, while we were humble Rastafari priests, we were now pushover because our background, where we came from, we put down certain type of life to take up that life of humility. So we, a lot of us had a background, you know, coming out of a lot of those garrison areas and those inner city areas. So we were not pushovers. So we were not afraid to defend what we needed to defend if we needed to defend it. So at times we have had to take stand back in the day, you know, to ease off some of the, so how, how, the oppression. How, when you say defend, uh, what would that defense be? Well, I, I can I can use one incident to to, to, um, to highlight it. We have an elder bridge in Priest Morgan who was by the standpipe, filling his bucket of water to take to his house, and the political thugs pounced upon him, annoyed him on today man he reacted and said what he said and they got physical beat him badly we had to take him up we had to use our, our donkey to carry him up to the hill with that when that happened the father lost it the father said well this is it we have to do something about it bridging do something so a set of i and i put ourselves together and went down into the, the ghetto and made our presence felt How? by going confronting the, the bridge in, confronting the people we kicked off door sorry we kicked off a door entered our house asked for the person confronted and did what we had to do which was what which was you know extend our, our hand of, 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 of you know um straightening you know <laughs> corporal punishment if you want to call it well, so you beat, you beat, you don't beat him up you don't beat him up literally two little slap because we're not that slap. type of people okay you know them okay. way but we made it totally clear that we were not going to tolerate it anymore mm -hmm. so and uh, all right let me take a quick break and come back let me take a quick is a priest doggy and um as a youth he went to live at bobo hill after having gone there as a student of calabar high school uh, in 73, moved in, in in 76 and lived. How long did you live there? I lived there until 81. Then I migrated, but I never stopped. You know, mm -hmm. you know while living overseas, yeah. I would be back for every celebration because I was a liaison. Yes. I was a government man. I worked for the father, with the father. Mm -hmm. So while I was overseas, I was his emissary doing yeah. you know yeah. works on behalf of the movement right and and so you're saying that under um king emmanuel uh there was order this is what i hear yes you saying. order principle structure you know he, he had the thing running the way it is supposed to run but that but but that with him transcending that broke um, down, that mm -hmm. broke down. Um, so all right you would have heard and we're hearing now of uh, um you know <sighs> One of one of one of the one of the the most um, heart wrenching news I got was of the apparent killing it appear of our sister Kelly at um, at at, Bo at Bobo Hill, and then we heard of a kidnapping. 
and and um, before that we heard of um, you know others coming in and, and and of guns being brandished on the compound and so on of of, of, of um, Rastafari being threatened there and so on what can you tell us about what has happened how Bubba Hill devolved to, to, to what's what it is what's happening there now well as I said after the father transition you know the, the talks took a freedom to get closer to the camp um, and being that the camp wasn't being maintained on the high level of standard that it was you know like for instance the fence during the father time our fence was always intact no matter whether a hurricane whatever blew it down we would put it right back up in a matter of days so everything was kept a certain way during the father's tenure now because there is no constant support and certain support that used to come in coming in the struggle is there we need to support what you mean financial support to maintain to run the, 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 the congress mm. because while um the father was there we had the broom industry mat sandals different crafts and stuff that we did mm. that kind of went down the hill too mm. along with the father's transitioning mm. so most ones that are there have other means of support okay um now Bubba Hill continued to be um, recognized so over the years visitors from overseas continue to visit the camp that brings a certain amount of incoming to the space mm -hmm. the thugs realizing this realizing now that they have a source and easy prey latched on all right so let me ask you a, a question because um what role did the 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 feud uh, apparent feud between well there's a feud between um say um capleton and junior reed how did that affect uh, um the the structure if if any uh, uh, of bubba hill not really though um, that world doesn't really collide with our world mm. in that sense you know um i have nothing negative to say about no one um in that sense but right, not, not just negative but yeah. you said did it have any impact no, on, like on I what said, was it, happening it, there no it doesn't collide with our world in any way all right so it had and, no impact. And because obviously the, these are conversations that we hear and then also how does the sizzler factor impact um Bobo hill if any and in any way and, and, and I, I have to ask these questions I, I, i'm a journalist so yes 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 well sizzler um all right to be clear this is an ongoing saga. You first had, and it wasn't the first incident, a priest Ryan was sh shot and killed in the camp for attempting to secure the back gate that the thugs were entering through. They saw him, came around, confronted him, shot him, killed him. Then they came, they burnt down the office, uh, um, beat up one of the, the priests that was agitating, you know, and it came down, went on. Uh, there was another fire. Several houses were burnt. Then it came down to recently, as you say, you know, with Sister Star being found dead in her house. You know, um, like you say, obviously killed in some way. Then my bridging, personal bona fide bridging, Priestedly Samuels, a lovely person, a humble bridging, a divine elder was taken out of his house at two o'clock in the morning and we have not seen him since when did that happen this happened in early august because he had called me on the first of august to to say blessed emancipation day so it happened like around the third or so of august and we have never seen so he was kidnapped from his home yes has not been seen since 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 a father of, of many and has several grandchildren he was the breadwinner and provider of his family so it has taken a great toll on that family as well you know? not much reporting on it either all right to be clear the bridging in the camp they are not speaking because they are under pressure what do you mean they are fearful for them life just the same way that he was taken they can be taken they have no defense against 
what is happening you know two murders and then a kidnapping which obviously is a murder as well because we have not found him since then you know so they are fearful they are not speaking it is people like myself who is not in the camp presently that have that freedom to speak freely so i am really telling their story on behalf of them you know so there is not much coming out as information in that sense to say you're getting it first and from in the camp right what do we know about um the, the sister who who was killed there what um, do we know about that well, talk, talk, talk to us about that sister who is she well uh we call her empress sharon she's known to most of jamaica as the print as a past former principal of a fern court fern court high school high school, high school. Yes. um I know they have done a mural to her there. Yes. Ubuntu and all of that. She, um, she was a very great principal. Yes, yeah, she very was. Very devoted, very, she, you know. She and was. she brought that kind of structure to Bubba Hill too yes, yes. when she came. Yes. Um, so uh, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I can't tell you much about her. She lived on. Bubba yes, she was killed in her house. How she long? Lived, do you know how long she was living there? She has been there now for going. Uh, it's more than a decade, that much I know. And her body was found because it was reported that her body was found. Mm -hmm. um, and, and condolences to her family. Definitely. Um, condolences to the brethren and, and sistren. Um, but, but if we're going to get justice for her, then we can't cover it up. We have to talk about it and we understand the fear um, coming from Bubba Hill. But, but, but let us be your voices. Um, so that she was found on the ground um, in her own home. Um, what, yes. what do we know about how she was found that, that you can say on air? I can't say much because it's an ongoing investigation. She was just found in a compromised um, position. you know. Um, obviously murdered. Obviously. So um, and nothing has come out contrary to that since then. The family has not made any open statements because like i say it's an ongoing investigation and they are hoping for justice as well yes, yes you know um but again after that was presently samuels you know two incidents happening so close to each other right there and that's not the only thing that is happening there in bull bay i'm i have to talk about the entire happening there are two rastafari that were recently killed on the beach at Bull Bay as well. So the mm -hmm. violence in Bull Bay by the same set of tug element is running rampant. I, I, I cannot speak. And Rastafari is caught in the middle of this. In the because middle. In the middle because we are, we are, we are pacifists. We are, we are non-violent people. So it's not like we are a part of any gang thing. You know, mm -hmm. It's not a confrontation between two gang entities or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Bobo Hill is a historic site where people flow to mm -hmm. to find out, you know, mm -hmm. about its, 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 its history. Yes. So because of that, that generates some form of income and the talk seat as an easy prey. Just recently, a film crew was here from Netherlands doing a documentary on post-slavery, whatever, and they visited the camp. While they were there, their vehicle was broken into and their goods, their belongings stolen. That's the type of environment that is there right now in that holy sanctuary. And, and while that is happening, this is also the home, the residence and place of worship and so on uh, of Rastafari. Yes, of priests and, 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 and families. Yes. Okay. And like, like I say, people Bridging and sisters come from overseas as well. When when Empress Sharon was killed, there were visitors there spending some time. Visitors from Trinidad, a visitor from um, Colombia, other visitors there spending some time at and the was, monastery. And were staying there. Yes, staying there. So they would have witnessed even in the, in the aftermath, yes. or, or possibly experienced. They must have experienced something. They were there, you know what I mean? So it must have been some form of trauma, you know, or traumatizing experience because... And yet, Priest Dougie, this thing is so underreported. Like I say, it's the fear. There is a fear factor that's running there that is, that is keeping ones from speaking openly, 
because these thugs are serious as you can see they don't hesitate to take a life especially if they find that there's an underlying thing in this society too you know where they have this thing about inform of the dead so with that philosophy and mentality you know these thugs live by that if they think that you threaten their whatever and you are talking to the forces they're gonna retaliate it would seem to me as if there is a responsibility on the part of government not just the security arm but also the cultural arm to respond or at least to yes somehow say something yes not only say something do something you are the government you are the civil servant of the people now i agree that rastafari might not be um, high value demographics when it comes to you know the political arena and yet it's the highest value when it comes to tourism and culture and culture exactly so while we don't part take in partisan politics we contribute to Jamaica's well-being through bringing in the tourists and the tourist dollar the music the influence we have on music and the culture of Jamaica is I mean beyond evident so and we are claimed according to what I'm I have been hearing we are claimed as one of the indigenous cultures of Jamaica and if we are uh, but, but that is a fact and and maybe you know i mean short of the time you know the, the only um indigenous right so as as such we should be protected and preserved in that sense you know so it would fall under the ministry of culture and the honorable you know babsy grange to act to say something to to at least do some fact finding to find out what's going on and let our voice and our presence be felt in that space but there is a desk for rastafari affairs within the ministry of culture yes so that in itself should uh, let me take a quick break let me take a quick break when i need to order concrete for my big or small jobs i order on inside of the africa forum it is running africa and my very special guest in studio is priest doggy and um it's painful and i'm i'm getting from from my listeners online um especially within the rastafari community and the pan-african african community that this is a, a bit painful to listen to um that this is happening to rastafari right here in jamaica without it seems any kind of of support from from the authorities or support from the government of jamaica which uses rastafari and the way it uses rastafari now before when we went into the break i was saying that there is a, a, a desk for rastafari affairs at the ministry of culture um are you aware of this priest again in some sense but it's not evident in general because um we don't have any access to that we don't have um a liaison that we are we know of our it's appointed to 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 interface with us um recently well we were told that it was barbara blake hannah well i think she has retired if if i'm not mistaken i don't know but anyway um like i say it's not evident of in in that in, in any greatly visible way then so we need to know who has succeeded barbara and and um minister grange and and for those who are listening this this is this is critical and i think that this is something that you have to you have to intervene in uh immediately we are told that um for heritage week coming into jamaica um the government of jamaica has invited the prince grandson Omar. of his imperial majesty prince omias to, to come in and there's a reason for that um that you have invited the, the grandson of his imperial majesty to, to, to come in and, and making a big deal of it um that speaks again to rastafari so how do you do that at the same time that you have a situation in Bobo Hill that you have not addressed. What would you like to see um, happen? Um, well, let me give you a little information as well that is going on. Um, there's a Rastafari collective, you know, um, to say, give thanks. Finally, I see the Rastafari in Jamaica, the movement in Jamaica is organizing itself and structuring itself much better than previously. There is a coalition 
that have been formed coming out of an incident with the trimming of a, of a young miss um, some time ago and this coalition has remained seated and is assisting with dealing with issues on the ground here so I approached the coalition they approached the Minister of Security who appointed a liaison to interface with the group eventually they appointed they, they, they assigned us or they, they appointed us to the district superintendent of that Bull Bay region now we have reached out to him several times he has not responded over the weeks and weeks um, since our initial contact with the Minister of Security we have had no follow-up we have reached out back to them to say we have not heard from the, the, the district superintendent they have not contacted you know they have not reached back forward to I and I to say well such or such or such so in a nutshell what I'm saying we even made direct contact and made the situation you know um, known to them and no action not even to even engage us in dialogue you know to, to get the full understanding of what the situation is from us so it is evident is that Rastafari serious. is of little value to them this is this is madness. Yes, I. This is madness at the at the highest levels. Well, let us um, appeal to the prime minister, since the minister of security and the minister of culture and all other ministries don't think that Rastafari is important enough for you to pay attention to what's happening to Rastafari being killed, being murdered, being violated by thugs. And, so, and, and, and then we have to put things into political context too because um, Warika Hill and that area um, politically is, is aligned to who? The Prime Minister's wife is the MP in that area. Are you serious? Yes, she is. No, you lie. Yes, she is. Miss Juliet. Miss Juliet. This one I feel... You take it from Babsy, take it from the Prime Minister, take it from the Minister of National Security and intervene today. Don't tell me that you don't know what is happening to Rastafari at Bobo Hill. You must know. I notice also that there seems to be some kind of survey going up in, in the area as if they're what are they doing? Selling land, mining, buying land. What's happening up there? In There's that all kinds of rumors, you know, because um I'm hearing some development to go on. I am hearing that some of this um, terrorism that is taking place is because they want to scare us off the land or move us off the land. I'm hearing all kinds of rumors. I can't, you know, substantiate them. Well, uh, un unless there is some, 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 some response from government to show that you at least care and you want to preserve the space, then this is why the boomers are filling the yes. vacuum and they might yes. be very true. Yes. You know, that yes. you really want to drive Rastafari out of the land so you can develop the land for whatever reason because this is what is happening in Jamaica until you intervene. So, 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 so this is... This and is Rastafari really needs to take this thing serious too, you know. We as a movement, ourselves, we have to reassess, you know, our previous, you know, function, how we, how we approach you know, living in this society. But where is the centralization of the movement? When you say Rastafari, I need to take it serious on how we approach and so on. Is there a central, is there, is there a heart that is of what Rastafari? Is, that is what is being galvanized right now. You know, you have brethren like Rasaya V and Rasai Vai and, you know, um, different sisters and ones that are coming together, you know, to try and you know, formulate an administrative goodie that can represent, you know, on all levels, not just... I understand. And in the meantime, though... Yes. In the meantime, Rastafari is under threat. Definitely. Um, and, and critical, immediate threat in Bobo Hill. And like I said, we, we as Rastafari, we have to assess our mode of operation as well because, you know, um, I don't... I myself don't want to have to say I am relying on the Babylon system to defend Rasta. But as it is here now though, 
with the threat that is being yes, posed. Yes, it, it needs immediate action it, from the, the, the society. The system. Yes, from the society and from the administration. But I'm speaking to Rastafari now. Rastafari and I need to, to um, understand the concept of collective security that his Imperial Majesty taught to I and I. We have to find that, that, that communists come together see, and become our brothers and sisters keeper, one another's keeper. The, the splintering and the, 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 the other things that have hampered our solidarity has to be put aside for the greater good. I understand. I see, I see Rasta March with enough things, you know, but what I am saying um, in this space now that the minute you have two brothers, a brother who was kidnapped has not been seen, an elder, you have a sister who was murdered and, and there's no outcry and there's no march. I mean, this is a sister, there's a mother, she's a former principal. This is a woman who was given to the society, given to the Ministry of Education, given to the Minister of the Ministry of Culture, given to Rastafari, and yet there is no outrage about her death and she was murdered murdered in Bubble Hill. Um, by who we need to find out or we need to march in the name of Sharon Kelly. You know, this is this is ridiculous that, that a woman could be murdered, viciously murdered, and, and there is silence. Silence among the sisters of Rastafari, silence among the brothers of Rastafari, silence among the uh, in, in the um in, in the community and silence from the government of Jamaica. This is foolishness. Well and Sister Cabo, as you know, that's how I reached out to you and um I have been the voice so far, and this is not anything about me. This is nothing about me. I'm just responding to what you just said. I have been on Muta program. I have been on Ras Miguel. I, have been I know, on, and you are, the, you are the person who's been reaching out. Yes, and I, have, and I have posted this picture all over social media. I have, I have put out a, um, a call. It's called the International Outcry. And we, I, have, I, know, I, have, I, I have hosted meetings of that International Outcry with brothers and sisters globally to discuss the situation. And we have heard you, my brother, um, in, in the spaces where you've been um, bringing but, this... But to it's only I. I have, I'm not yes. hearing any other voice following it up, though, apart from, like I said, the coalition has contacted the ministries, but I am not hearing the people. The people, because Rastafari are always defending the people, especially the poor and have not and the disenfranchised. Yes. Now the people need to rise up and speak on behalf of Rastafari. And I say I say also to the Minister of Education that that you also have a stake in this because a former principal, a former educator who did so well in the system at Fern Court High School has been viciously murdered. You've been silent well, I think you said one thing. But 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 then that's that. Nothing else. We, we, what happened? I mean, is it just all gossip? Is it because she's Rastafari? What if she was from another school and she wasn't Rastafari? Or you don't deal with that? But I'm sorry that we're out of time, but I give you a final word. My sister, I give thanks. Um, like I say again, um, this is happening. And Rastafari, we have to check ourselves and reassemble ourselves and, you know, revise how we function. The Society of Jamaica, you need to pay more attention to the violence that is going on. It is affecting Rastafari, but it's affecting the entire so society. society. You know, yes. the moral decay and yes. the lack of ethics from the leaders of the country right down to the preachers uh, in church needs to change. So we are at a crossroads, Jamaica. We have to do something. Give yes, that. my brother, I leave it to you. Thank you so much. And we'll continue to, to, to give you the voice when you when you need it. Thank you so much, my brother, and thank, thank you sister. so much for coming in. That's the video. I just thought the mindset. Smash that subscribe button. See you on the next video. I just thought the mindset.